Night Dive Studios has become a favorite among gamers for their resurrections of classic titles. Unfortunately, they didn't quite live up to their reputation with the Enhanced Edition of the classic Blade Runner game. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Enhanced Edition, the backlash, and how Night Dive eventually dealt with it. So let's get started, shall we? It's not an easy thing to get a game's license from its makers. Blade Runner is one of the best sci-fi movies ever made, but it didn't exactly set the box office on fire. Westwood's video game adaptation also made a splash among gamers, but because it was so expensive to make in the first place, it failed to turn a significant profit. There were plans to make a sequel, but the film rights were being licensed from the Blade Runner partnership and they'd offered the publishers a bad deal. Fun facts, the Borderlands gang at Gearbox Software were offered a shot at making the sequel, but they rejected the project when they estimated the cost at $35 million. A lot of old classics have been reappearing on Steam thanks to the work of studios like Night Dive and retailers like Good Old Games. But the case of Blade Runner was complicated. The original original source code had been lost, and the rights belong in part to Blade Runner Partnership and in part to ugh, EA. There was a successful attempt to reverse engineer the game's code and assets and run the game in a virtual machine. That version was released as part of the Scum VM collection available at GOG. Night Dive Studios and Alcon Entertainment somehow wrangled the rights to the game and announced a ground-up remake of the game based on the Scum VM release. New character models, new animations, new cutscenes. For Blade Runner fans, it was a day to look forward to. Turns out, Night Dive has done questionable things. When the Enhanced Edition finally came to Steam, the reaction wasn't exactly enthusiastic. Fans complained that the game's visual uplift was a serious downgrade, and the fonts were difficult to deal with. For a game that involves so much reading, getting the fonts wrong is a big deal. Also, the thing that seems to happen to every remaster and remake happened here as well. New bugs, new glitches. All these issues have netted the game a mostly negative rating on Steam, with only 34% of people having a positive outlook on it. Clearly, Night Dive had to do something. They announced that they would be fixing the bugs and glitches through patches, but some parts of the game cannot be changed by patches. You can't exactly shift the game's aesthetic with a software update. That's one of the biggest complaints against it. About the only thing Night Dive could do to save their reputation from a nosedive was to release the Scum VM version of the game on Steam. This particular release even has some new content that was cut from the original game. Turns out that this was all the fans really wanted, and many reviewers on the Steam page warned people to purchase the Classic Edition and pass on the so-called Enhanced Edition. But these aren't Night Dive's only tears. The company Night Dive was founded in 2012 by Steven and Alex Kick, who used to be character artists at Sony Online Entertainment. They were inspired to found the company after Steven ran into issues trying to get his CD of System Shock 2 to work on his computer. He approached the insurance company who owned the rights to the game, and they negotiated terms for him and Alex to start a company that would patch and update System Shock 2 to run on today's systems. While Night Dive has found a lot of success reacquiring the rights to classic games and fixing them to run on modern PCs and consoles, they've had a lot less success doing anything more involved than that. Specifically, we're talking about Night Dive's ambitions for the System Shock series, the games that gave rise to the company altogether. While they've released updated versions of the classic games that have creature comforts for new gamers, their ground-up remake of the first System Shock has been in development hell for years. That game was announced in 2015, but has been delayed so many times that it has a prospective release date of some point in 2022. Their plans include a similar remake of System Shock 2 and a brand new System Shock 3. While the original release window of System Shock had it squarely within the 0451 renaissance of the mid-2010s, we do feel like the genre has gone back to sleep somewhat. Could System Shock give it another revival? Well, in order to do that, the game would have to be released. Night Dive's System Shock remake is available for pre-order on Steam, and if you pre-order it, you'll apparently get the System Shock 2 remake for free. We have to say that it's a tempting proposition, even if the games are vaporware right now. In other news, firstly, when it comes to Blade Runner, multiple editions is a tradition. One of the enduring fables of the sci-fi movie genre is the many versions or cuts of the Blade Runner movie that are floating around out there. If you stream or buy the movie today, you'll get the version that director Ridley Scott and everyone else calls the final cut, but there are like six other versions of the movie. Let's take a quick look at some of them. The first version of the movie was the work print shown to test audiences in Denver, and the second version was the one shown in San Diego, both in 1982. While there were a few scenes that were missing between the versions, the main thing to know about them was that they confused the test audience, leading to studio-mandated changes to the version released in theaters in 1986. This cut had two major problems, the inferior ending and the addition of a voiceover from Harrison Ford. This was meant to help audiences get the movie, but Blade Runner is a real thinker, and it doesn't help to have Deckard just tell you everything that's going on. 
Ford himself hated the voiceover and intentionally phoned it in in protest. There were two theatrical cuts. The U.S. and international versions were similar, save for a few scenes. 1992 saw the release of the first director's cut. Nearly a decade later, Ridley Scott got his first shot at making his version of Blade Runner. The three headlining changes were no more dumb voiceover, a dream sequence, and a better ending. The 1992 cut was the basis of the final cut, which just contains some more content from the cutting room floor. Whew, this movie has a complicated story inside and out. We just hope that the same fate doesn't befall the game. And you know what else is traditional? Buggy remasters of games. It's kind of weird to think that developers can take an old game and make it worse, yet that's so commonly the way game remasters play out. The controversy with Blade Runner Enhanced Edition follows hot on the heels of Rockstar's effort to remake the GTA trilogy. Those were games that people still enjoyed in their original forms, but Rockstar felt the need to remake them and wound up with similar results to Blade Runner. There was a backlash against the aesthetics and the massive amount of bugs. Gamers did praise the updates to mechanics and features like the map, but would still rather prefer playing the originals, which are no longer available to buy because Rockstar considers these to be the definitive versions of the games, for some reason. And finally, there are some diamonds in the rough. If you'd like to revisit some of gaming's enduring classics through their remasters, here are our recommendations. You can't talk about game remasters without bringing up the OG Resident Evil trilogy. These strike the perfect balance between modernizing the gameplay and keeping things like the first one's tank controls and fixed camera angles, which were part of what made the games scary. Updated visuals, voice acting, and cutscenes really package these classics in an up-to-date form. The more recent series of games that got the remaster treatment was the Mass Effect trilogy. These are iconic RPGs of the 2000s and 2010s, but the first two entries feel rather dated by today's standards. On top of that, there was no way to access the DLC for those games on PC. The legendary edition of the trilogy gives the right amount of polish to the games and includes all of the content, allowing gamers to experience this Space Odyssey masterpiece in its best form. We'll also throw in a wreck for the Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's a stellar ground-up redo of one of the most influential RPGs of all time, and we'd definitely push you to play it right this minute, if it was available. Square Enix has chosen to release this remake in three parts, and only part one is available right now. Part two is slated for release in 2023-2024, with no time frame from part three yet. That's all for our gaming coverage today. Have you played either version of the Blade Runner game? Do you agree with the criticisms of the Enhanced Edition, or do you think it's just going through release day blues. And what should Night Dive take away from this experience? Sound off in the comments below and make sure to like, share, and subscribe.